Imagine yourself in Berlin in the mid-twenties. Less than a decade ago, your country lost one of the largest and most devastating wars in the history of humanity. At that time, Berlin was one of the largest cities in the world and it witnessed a lot of crime, brawls, and drug abuse. But as you walk around, your surroundings might not be as bleak as you might imagine. The city itself was notorious for being decadent. Sex work, homosexuality, and new social behaviors were challenging traditional norms. Some women were redefining the very meaning of womanhood. A virtuous woman had to be docile, dependent of her husband, motherly. She had to rigorously upkeep a nice appearance. She can't put her husband to shame. Oh, and she can't drink or smoke. That's unladylike. Some women rejected these notions of virtue and, with the ascension of modernity, came the new woman, or new Frau. And as you walk in the streets of 1920s Berlin, you might come across one of those new Frau. It's at the Romanisch Café, one of Berlin's artistic hub, that Otto Dix met Sylvia von Harden, a German journalist. As she recalled, he said, I must paint you. I simply must. You are representative of an entire epoch. So you want to paint my lackluster eyes, my ornate ears, my long nose, my thin lips. You want to paint my long hands, my short legs, my big feet. Things which can only scare people off and delight no one. You have brilliantly characterized yourself, and all that will lead to a portrait representative of an epoch concerned not with the outward beauty of a woman, but rather with her psychological condition. 1920s Berlin was quite a vibrant epoch filled with vibrant characters, and Otto Dix thought that this character is representative of this epoch, and he painted a portrait of her. It's one of Otto Dix's most famous portrait. It took three weeks of posing, several hours a day. It's the unflattering portrait of the journalist Sylvia von Harden. So how does Sylvia von Harden represent this new epoch? Or put differently, how does she represent the new woman? Well, we can look both at her appearance and at her actions. Sylvia von Harden being a woman, her appearance is really what this painting has been known for. Her short hair, flat chest, large tentacular hands, her monocle, her facial expression, her slipping stockings. All of those elements were putting her at odds with the traditional discreet and virtuous woman. When a woman is painted, it's been historically for the male gaze. Very often, women were painted for men to look at them, but here, that's not the case. Von Harden didn't pose for the male gaze, but her portrait is still viewed in relation to it. She's not the ideal woman. She is notoriously not attractive to the viewer. We look at this portrait thinking, not of what this woman is, but what this woman is not. And even though this painting might have not been intended for the male gaze, it was still subjected to it. But I believe the strength of this portrait doesn't reside in Sylvia's appearance, but in her actions. She's drinking and smoking with one arm hanging over the back of her chair. Her stare is not directed at anything or anyone. She's lost in thought. She's thinking. If anything, this portrait says, above all, that Sylvia is a thinker. She's an intellectual. And it's because of that very characteristic that everything falls into place. She exudes independence. She's not wearing a wedding ring and, most importantly, she's alone in the corner of a room. The wall's strong color somehow emphasizes the fact that she's alone, enclosing her into an empowering loneliness. Many have posited that Dix was caricaturing the new woman, making her look unattractive, manlike, and unsophisticated. And though that could be true, it seems to me that Sylvia von Harden nonetheless appreciated her portrait, and so do I. 
I believe it reveals more complexity than ridicule. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing if you have already. And I'd like to thank especially you, Design I Write, Kohler, and every other patron for supporting the channel. If you also want to support the channel on Patreon, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas.